deciding your destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart. Well, it's a great honour and privilege to be able to share with you again. And I do believe that the Holy Spirit will illuminate your heart as you open up to his guidance and leading. And I do believe that today's topic is going to be very relevant to those who are reaching out for answers. Because I'm going to talk about attitudes for answers. Very powerful topic in today's world. To know that there are answers to the seeming impossible situations of life. And there's a wonderful scripture in Jeremiah 33, 3. It simply says, Call to me and I will answer and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. So it means we're being invited to talk to the Almighty, to call upon Him, and He promises there will be answer. I will answer you and show you, not just answer words, but show you great and mighty things which you do not know. There are many things we don't know about our future, about our present challenges. Many things we don't know about the situation in our world today. But we must focus on the answers which God's Word has given us and know that He is willing and ready to give us answers to the things we do not know. And then a scripture which has been a great encouragement to me for many years is Psalms 107 verse 2. It says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. To know that you're redeemed from the hand of the enemy is a wonderful thing. To know that you're not at a victim of the devil or circumstances, but you have been redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus from the hand of the enemy. And that puts you on a basis of communication with God when we're redeemed and translated out of the kingdom of darkness into God's kingdom. It means we are communicating with him moment by moment every single day. And so he encourages us not to be silent, but say so. And this is part of the answer to our own challenges in life. If we will speak out and declare about our future, that God has a good future for us. And if we feed on his word and have our minds renewed, our faith will grow and we will be strong in him. So he promises great and mighty things, but he also, of course, will do small things for us, even the most minor things in our lives. I may have shared with you before, but when I was traveling to a meeting not far from our building here, suddenly we were hit by a very fast car coming behind us as we were turning right. A lady driving, she was on the phone and she was distracted. She never saw us. She caused my car to be a write-off. Thankfully, we were not seriously hit or wounded. But there are weapons of mass distractions. We've heard a lot about weapons of mass destruction. But there are weapons of mass distractions. Things that try to take our attention as we journey through life. So we need to keep our focus on where we're going and keep saying what God says in order to have our minds renewed and our hearts filled with faith. In Mark chapter 2, verse 1 through 12, I hope you'll take the time to read it carefully. Not just read it, but meditate upon it because it's full of life it's full of anointing and power. And it's the story of Jesus coming again into Capernaum, it says, after some days. 
and it was heard that he was in the house. And immediately many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no longer room to receive them. But Jesus preached the word unto them. Then there came four people bringing one who was sick of the palsy. They were carrying him on a bed. But when they got near the house where Jesus was speaking, the place was already crowded and they could not get near the door to enter. These four people who carried the man who was sick of the palsy, they didn't give up hope at the first sign of challenge or opposition. They were very diligent and very dedicated. And it says that they took the man up on the roof and they lifted the bed up with the man who was sick of the palsy. And when they had taken off the tiles and off the roof and broken it through, it says, then they let down the bed wherein of the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw that, when he saw their faith, he said to the man who was sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven you. But some of the scribes they began to reason within themselves and accused Jesus of blaspheming, saying, Who can forgive sins but God only? But Jesus said to them, Why do you thus reason? Whether is it easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven, or rise, take up your bed, and walk? Jesus immediately spoke these words to him, and he immediately rose, took up his bed, and walked in the presence of them all. So they were greatly amazed, the people around. And they glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. When we allow Jesus to have his way, and do not get distracted by the remarks of people who have no vision for the helping of others, then we move forward through these distractions and no longer are we turned aside. And the result is that others get their needs met and lives are changed and Jesus is glorified. I love what it says there. They were all amazed. The people around were amazed and glorified God and said, we never saw anything like this. Well, I believe the world needs to see more of God's love and power in action because it was the love of God that made the difference. Jesus wanted to touch this man and he wanted him to be raised up, no longer being carried on a bed, but he would be carrying his bed. And those four people who came, they gave up of their time they took risks of being ridiculed. They took the trouble of taking off the tiles and letting down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, see, faith is something you see, not just something you talk about. They believed that Jesus was going to heal them. And so they took this extreme action and was very determined to get him to where Jesus was. It's interesting too that there was a crowd immediately came. When they heard that Jesus was in the house, the multitudes came around the door. There was no room anymore. So there was a hunger and a thirst and a, an attitude for answers. The people were looking for answers and they weren't going to be put off just because there was a lot of crowds of people around. So we need to be diligent to press through the crowd and press through the obstacles to get to our objectives. And so we will then be able not only to glorify God, but we will be able to bring others who can't bring themselves to Jesus so their lives can be changed forever. I have a little hope pillar which is very much 
relevant today, winning in a losing world, winning strategies in a losing world. So we have to turn aside from man's solutions and realize when it seems there is no answer, if we turn to the scriptures and meditate in them and live in them, then we will have winning strategies in a losing world, a world that depends on its own mind and intelligence, turning aside from the scriptures and turning aside, being distracted by all that's happening in the world. They lose and the family loses, the community loses. But when we put God's word into action and apply his principles, not only do we win ourselves, but we put ourselves in a position where we can cause others to win. I know you may have heard it before, but it's so true. Trouble is inevitable, but misery is optional. Yes, you'll have trouble, testings and trials, whether it be in the home and the family, in the community, maybe trouble in the political situation around you, maybe to do with your health. But one thing is sure, we don't have to accept misery. We can adopt an attitude for answers. And when we do, we make life easier for ourselves and for those around us. Trouble is inevitable, but misery is optional. So don't take misery on. It will only make you weaker. It will only make you less effective. And it will destroy your faith. But maintaining an attitude for answers, that will awaken your faith. And people will be drawn to you and to Jesus. Because that's when the Holy Spirit it takes control. It's interesting too that Jesus took charge and stop the distraction. You know the way they were trying to put him down and discourage him and said, you're blaspheming by talking about forgiving sins. They tried to distract Jesus and get him off the f focus of getting the man healed. But Jesus took charge and stopped the distractions and said to the man, arise and walk. So we've got to be on our guard against distractions all the time. Don't let them take your attention. There was also importance of divine connections. Because this man who was sick of the palsy, he was a paralytic, he couldn't take care of himself, he couldn't walk. But because four other men was involved and took action to help him. They had given him their attention. And so we need to partner with people who are hurting. We need to reach out beyond ourselves. And we need to delight in seeing others transformed. And that's when you receive peace in abundance. You may say, well, I have too many problems myself. I haven't time to help those that are hurting. Well, actually, the key to getting your own needs met is helping others. If you cannot do much physically, you can at least pray for people. And that's a very important activity. In fact, prayer is the biggest, most important thing that we can, all can do to lift up those around us, to give thanks, to give praise and honor to the Lord. The Lord delights to answer the prayers of his people. And it tells us there in Psalms 84 verse 11, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. How do you walk uprightly? not our own strength, not our own good works, but coming to Jesus and acknowledging we are sinners, we are lost, and we have no hope. But we receive Christ 
as our Lord and Savior, through putting our faith in what he did on the cross and acknowledging that he is more than enough. When we receive him, we receive his wisdom, we receive his divine ability, we receive his discernment, and so he not withhold any good thing from us because he loves to meet our needs. And so we need to be expecting an avalanche of answers every single day of our lives. And then in Philippians 1, verse 19, verse 19 and 20, if you read that carefully, the Apostle Paul was sharing his faith and responding to his challenges. There in Philippians 1, 19 and 20, he says, For I know that this shall turn to my salvation, or my deliverance, through the prayers and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my expectation and hope, that in nothing shall I be ashamed, but with all boldness, as always, so now, also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or death. So when you understand the trial that Paul was coming through, the imprisonments, the sufferings, the beatings, the persecution he suffered, but he wasn't focusing on the suffering, on his imprisonment or even his present situation where he was often in chains. But he was saying, I know this is going to turn around. In other words, I know there's going to be answers. And as Paul was in prison, he didn't actually focus on himself for his suffering or the horrible conditions which those prisons were in those days. But he turned his attention on the purpose of God in his life and witnessed and shared answers with others and influence people everywhere, sharing Jesus with people. And as he did, that brought him up above the level of negativity and self-centeredness and made him God-conscious and caused him to have his mind on answers. He said, I know this will turn to my deliverance through your prayers. So he was telling other believers who were not obviously in the prison but there were an assembly of believers elsewhere. And the scripture says, he said, it will turn to my deliverance through your prayers. So it's so important to keep lifting people up in prayer that are coming through struggles and stresses. Not only to, as I said earlier, pray, but to praise and give thanks, which makes our prayers far more effective. Through your prayers, and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. According to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing shall I be ashamed, but with all boldness, as always, so now Christ may be magnified in my body, whether by life or death. He knew that he could be put to death any time. Often, people like him were put to death. Persecution was rampant. But he kept his faith alive. He had his mind on answers, not on negativity. So don't let there be an attitude against answers in your life. Have an attitude for answers, because God has provided all the answers we could ever need. Even when we don't feel that we can see any answers, maybe through a struggle in your health at the moment, it may be a relative, a loved one that you're concerned about or who has turned away from the Lord. But the good news is, when we keep our faith built up, it will turn to our deliverance. So we don't have to have an attitude against answers but we have an attitude for answers. An attitude against answers, of course, is an attitude of unbelief. 
where we always think limited, where we don't meditate and saturate ourselves in the Word, but we keep our faith alive. It says in James 1, 16 and 17, Do not be deceived, my brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, no shadow of turning. You see, the Holy Spirit illuminates the Word to us as we become more aware of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We have a lovely little short booklet called The Baptism of the Holy Spirit, which shows us the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And He enables and He empowers and He enlightens us. We speak the Word right, even as we're doing this moment, by the power of the Holy Spirit, not on our own ability. And so he says there in James 1, 16 and 17, Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. So it's possible even for those who are born again to become deceived and think negative and think unbelief and think there's no way out. And the enemy loves to do that, to make us feel there's no hope. But there's always hope whenever we have Jesus in our hearts and in our lives. He says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, from the Father of lights. Comes down, it's not just staying there. The good gifts of blessing and peace are coming down every single moment if we'll tune our hearts. It's like a radio station or a television. You've got to tune it to the channel that you want to watch or hear. So are you tuned in to Heaven's broadcasting? Are you tuned in to the voice of the Holy Spirit? Or are you listening to the voice of the world? And as we look around us today, there's so much to distract and make us look at the negative situation. But we have a choice. We also have a little hope builder called Change and Choice. I gave it to someone just the other day in a short distance from our own building here a man, he was from the Middle East background. And I believe he was really very interested as he reads that change and choice. We have a choice. When change comes and challenge comes, maybe a challenge on our health, which I had recently when I was traveling and double vision came, and that's why I have these glasses for the moment. Uh, double vision came and I was unable to drive and I had to be brought to the hospital. But thank the Lord, after the scans, I was told that there was no problem with a tumor in the brain as the thought I might have had, or a stroke. And I'm giving God the glory that I'm getting over it and getting stronger and keep ministering as best I can and as often as I can. So I just pray that you'll be blessed today as you let this word saturate your being and you will be aware that every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. Jesus already made the provision for peace in your heart. Jesus already made provision for healing for your body, for healing of broken relationships and cause you to go forward from strength to strength. Build your faith and your faith will build you. We don't have to turn aside to circumstances around us, but we can go forward in victory in the name of Jesus. And so, as I come toward the close of this talk today, I want to encourage you to check your heart. Are you right with the Lord? Have you really received his salvation? Do you know his peace? Are you aware of the fact that God is with you? And you can have answers, have an attitude for answers. And God will honor you as you go forward. So I pray a blessing on you right now, healing from every sickness in the name of Jesus. And I pray that each and every one in your family connection will be blessed and empowered as you honor the Lord. 
If you've not received salvation, invite Jesus right now by simply saying, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. You're watching Deciding Your Destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart. Don't forget we're on Facebook Live. Uh, we would be happy if you would join and hear what's been said and enjoy the benefit and blessings of what we're sharing day after day. And do pray for us. You can watch our programs again and again and share it with other people that they'll be blessed as well. Do pray for that as well because there's many people hurting and broken and they're searching for answers. And your prayers makes the difference. I also want to mention a, a little hope builder called Divine Awareness, living in a Divine Awareness attitude, and that will build your faith and empower you. So do keep in touch, and don't forget, God is for you, God is with you, and He has your best interest at heart. Look forward to hearing from you, and do let us know where you're watching from. Thank you for your prayers. You're watching Deciding Your Destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart. Do remember, we're on YouTube. You can watch all of our programs, share it with others, and they will also be blessed as you make it known. You're watching Deciding Your Destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart. You're watching Deciding Your Destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart. encourage you to respond to this program by post, telephone, email or via our website to obtain free copies of our Hope Builders, CCN News, prayer requests or to help support this ministry by praying or giving. Look us up on Facebook and watch more programs on our YouTube channel.